Keeping beehives on your homestead could not only supply you and your family with valuable goods like honey and beeswax, but depending on the amount of time and money you have available to spend, you could potentially scale your operation into a profitable business. This is the first in a series of videos where we show you the ins and outs of beekeeping on your homestead. We are going to dedicate videos to honeybee ecology, the avenues of profiting from your hives, and the different hive setups you could consider for your homesteads and business alike. To get started, we are going to discuss honeybee ecology, covering aspects such as the bee cost systems, high functionality and basic factors such as how honey is made. If you like what you see and hear in this video, then check out the description for your copy of our ebook. For the sake of clarity, we will be discussing beehives in this video, which is a man-made structure in which bees form a colony. Bee nests are naturally occurring in open cavities. Let's get started by discussing the three different kinds of adult bees you would find in a hive. In a hive, you will find three different kinds of honeybee, the worker bees, drone bees, and a queen bee. The role each bee is destined to perform is determined when they are laid as eggs by the queen bee. There is one queen bee in a hive and she does all the egg laying. She has the ability to decide if she wants to lay male or female eggs based on the needs of the colony, as male and female bees have very different jobs in a hive. If the queen bee wants to lay female eggs, she releases spermatozoa at the same time she releases an egg. These spermatozoa are stored in the spermatheca, found just behind her ovaries. When the queen bee mates with male bees, the spermatheca is filled with spermatozoa. Mating with just 20 bees during a single flight out of the hive will be enough to fill her spermatozoa stores for up to 5 years. If it's a male egg the queen bee wants to lay, she will not release any spermatozoa and as a result, no fertilization will occur as the egg leaves the ovaries. The queen bee is twice the size of a worker bee. As the name and egg laying abilities allude to, the queen bee is a female. All other female bees who are not the queen bee are worker bees. These worker bees perform numerous tasks throughout their short lives. Some of these roles include cell cleaning, caring and feeding young larvae, tending to the queen bee, collecting pollen, nectar and other resources, storing honey and protecting the hive. Depending on the age of the bee, these tasks will be completed in a sequential order. There are four phases of jobs throughout the life of a worker bee, beginning in the inside of the hive while the bee are young and moving towards the exterior as they age. Phase 1 begins after the bees emerge from metamorphosis, which occurs about three weeks after they hatch from the egg. At this time, their main job is to clean the cell from which they emerged and make sure they are ready for the next generation of bee. Three days later, phase 2 begins. Hormones are triggered and nurse bee mode begins. Roles include feeding the young larvae of the next generation. This usually lasts about one week. In phase 3 the bees are in full on worker mode. They start to move towards the outer portion of the hive and perform tasks such as honeycomb building, storing food and guarding the hive entrance. A physiological change also occurs in this stage. 10 day old worker bees develop a wax producing gland in their abdomen. This gland allows them to convert the sugar in honey to wax. The wax oozes through their pores and collects on their bodies, which they then chew and use in the construction of honeycomb. This stage usually lasts around one week. The final phase of the worker bee's lifestyle, phase 4, is the foraging phase. The worker bee finally leaves the hive to gather pollen and nectar to bring home and feed the colony. Pollen is the number one protein source consumed by bees. After 40 to 50 days of life, the workers will leave the hive and never return as they die from exhaustion. These who die in the hive are removed by undertaker worker bees. Lastly, we have the drone bees. These are male bees whose sole purpose is to mate with the queen bee. They do not forage outside the hive, only leaving the colony to mate or when they are ejected from the hive in times of resource shortage. While they wait for the queen, they are fed by worker bees. They have very large eyes, a large body, and no stinger. Their big eyes help them locate the queen bee when the time for mating arrives. The life expectancy of worker and drone bees is very short. Worker females generally survive for 6 weeks in summer, but this is extended to 4-9 to nine months in the winter time. Male drone bees die after mating with the queen bee or they are ejected in the hive in the autumn as resources start to dwindle. Queen bees on the other hand can survive for up to 5 years. How does a bee become a queen? As we mentioned before, there is only ever one queen bee per hive. They can lay up to 2,000 eggs per day, or one every 20 seconds. Queen bees owe their existence to a substance called royal jelly. When a queen dies or leaves the hive in a swarm to start a new colony, the original hive is left queenless. Worker bees then go about the task of selecting a new female larvae to become the new queen. The exact biochemical pathways are still unknown, but the importance of royal jelly is very clear. Royal jelly is produced by worker bees from a gland in their heads called the hypopharynx. Royal jelly is made up of digested pollen, honey and nectar. It is extremely high in protein and contains other beneficial compounds like lipids, sugars, 
hormones, minerals, and acetylcholine. This jelly is fed to a few of the larvae, and on day three of this diet, a small number of the larvae are selected to continue, while the others are reverted to a less nutritious diet of honey, pollen, and water. The larvae who continue to receive the royal jelly undergo additional development that other bees not fed this diet do not experience. For instance, ovaries will develop. The first queen bee to hatch will destroy the other larvae by stinging them. Or if multiple queens hatch at a single time, they will fight until a single queen bee remains. Afterwards, the worker bees will continue to feed the queen bee the highly nutritious diet of royal jelly until she dies. Beehive Architecture Before you can start up your own hives, a general understanding of beehive architecture is required. At the entrance of a hive, protector worker bees stand guard on their back forelegs, with their front two legs raised. They inspect every entry to the hive with their antenna and front legs. These protector bees are able to distinguish alien bees because every hive has a unique odor, and they can detect members of their own hive based on scent when they use their legs and antenna. Alien bees are usually forbidden from entering the hive, but may be allowed to do so on occasion if they bring valuable substances such as pollen and nectar. The walls at the entry to the hive are covered in a substance called propolis. This is a hardened resin produced by bees to help fight infection and maintain the health of the colony. Inside the hive are walls of honeycomb mesh made up of densely packed hexagons constructed from bees' wax. These cells are used to store food and pollen. The queen bee also lays her eggs in these cells, and the young larvae are fed inside them by the worker bees. The honeycomb extends along the width of the hive, and small gaps at the edges are allow bees to move around as needed. Bees use the honeycomb wall in different ways. The upper portion of the comb is used to store honey. The lower cells are used to store pollen. Below these you can find the eggs destined to become the future worker bees, and at the very bottom are the drone eggs. Bee foraging behavior. When forager bees find a suitable nectar source, they return to the hive and begin to dance for the other workers. This dance is used to communicate details about the nectar source to the other worker bees so they can go and forage among the same source. In this dance, the bee wiggles and moves in figures of eight patterns and shakes its wings. This dance communicates the following to the other bees. The length of the dance describes how far away from the hive the nectar source is. 75 milliseconds of dance correlates to a distance of 100 meters. The intensity of the dancing describes the richness of the nectar source. The strength of the wiggling relates to the amount of nectar available, and the angle of the dancing pathway describes the direction of the nectar source in relation to the sun. When foraging bees arrive back at the hive, they do another trembling dance. This alerts the other worker bees to come and process the nectar they have gathered. Foraging bees deliver pollen, nectar, tree resin for propolis, and water to cool the hive and hydrate the bees. Hive Dynamics Beehives are highly sensitive to temperature fluctuations. Temperatures must be maintained at 35 degrees Celsius for eggs to hatch properly. Luckily, beehives have their own air conditioning system. The bees themselves. If temperatures fall, the bees vibrate to raise their body temperatures which in turn raises the air temperature. When temperatures rise, the forager bees deliver water droplets on their backs, but their wings very fast, and the water evaporates to cool the hive. Queen bees are found inside the inside of the hive. While she is laying eggs and being tended to by the worker bees, she releases pheromones. These pheromones communicate important information to the rest of the colony, and are known as prima pheromones. Prima pheromones are released to maintain social order. Worker bees commonly exude release of pheromones in response to a specific event. This includes alarm pheromones and orientation pheromones. Queen bees mate with male drones outside the hive on a mating flight, as high up as 30 meters in the air. The drones join with the queen bee. She can mate with 10 to 20 drones, supplying her with a lifetime of millions of spermatozoa to store in her spermatheca. When colonies get too big, the queen along with half of the worker bees will leave the hive in a swarm in search of a new home. The worker bees that are left behind get started rearing a new queen bee. Honeybees are generalist pollinators, which means they can harvest nectar and pollen from a wide variety of flowers. In spite of this, they will stick to a single type of flower per flight. You can observe the effects of this as bees re-enter the hive carrying only a single kind of pollen. When a bee is collecting nectar, she sucks it up through her proboscis. She stores the nectar in the side of her throat in the nectar sac and carries the nectar back to the hive so other worker bees can start making honey. The nectar in the sac mixes with a special enzyme. When this nectar is transferred from the tongue of the gathering bee to the tongue of another worker bee back at the hive, the liquid evaporates and honey is formed. When it comes to pollen gathering, a bee brushes up against and bites the anthers of a flower where pollen is produced. The pollen collects on the hairs of her body and in her mouth. She then brushes the pollen all along her body and mixes it with some nectar to hold it all together. The bee then brushes the pollen into pouches on her back legs. These are called pollen baskets. Back at the hive, the pollen is stored in cells and mixed with honey to make a feed to sustain the rest of the colony. 
And that's all for our introductory video on honeybee behavior and ecology. Keep an eye out for future videos discussing ways to profit from your bees and the different beehives you can consider installing. Remember your copy of your ebook before you go and we will see you in the next video.